Hi guys, it's Oshin Murphy here. I'm just on the way down from Yorkshire. So it was at the wheel. Uh, I was riding Breezer Parsons this morning. Obviously the news has, have, has been announced that British racing is going to halt until the end of April. I'm very concerned, but I'm also very concerned for the other participants, not only jockeys, but trainers, all the staff. There's so much uncertainty, the owners of horses. We don't really know what's around the corner. Public safety is a prime concern, and obviously everyone's responsibility. I've taken every possible step I can to remain healthy and not pass on any illnesses I may have contracted over the last few weeks to elderly people or anyone at all. Um, all we can do is sit and wait and try and stay as safe as we can. Hi everyone, it's Sophie Dorr here. I wanted to speak to you today as I was presented with a question about how has the coronavirus impacted the world of horse racing, especially here in America? Well, I can sum that up in one word, uncertainty. There is a lot of uncertainty right now. And as of at the moment, you know, where are we going to race next? As of at the moment, we are continuing to race, but behind closed doors from the public. But we have seen that Keeneland have canceled their spring meet which brings to a huge uncertainty about horse racing as to where where can trainers move their horses to next? Where are jockeys going to be able to move their tack to once their race meets finish? Are we going to be able to move to Oaklawn? Are we going to be able to stay where we are and continue racing with extra race dates being put on? We really don't know. You know, and the next question is about, you know, owners, trainers, grooms, hot walkers, exercise riders, and including us jockeys, is are we still going to have our jobs in another month? Are we still going to be racing? And, you know, a lot of the owners, are they going to be able to continue supplying the funds that we need to continue with horse racing? Are they going to continue have being able to look after their horse races that they horses that they have in training? You know, there's a lot of uncertainty. And one thing today I've noticed being down here in Ocala in Florida and being at the sales this afternoon, there's a huge impact on the consignments, the breeders, and of course with the owners who have a lot of stock shares going on, they took a huge impact. So today's sale wasn't where it probably should have been. The consignments have taken a huge hit and unfortunately we're just all having to get by. I feel like as we learned today with the horse racing in England being completely stopped until the end of April, that brings a huge uncertainty for all of us in racing. Well, we've listened to the experts and tried to follow the guidelines of obviously social distancing, but most importantly, hygiene with washing hands and using lots of the gel. Plus, we're taking our staff's temperatures when they arrive at work before they walk in the gate. Uh, temperature gun to their forehead, taking their temperature, um, making sure that they're within normal limits. This is something we do every day with the horses, so being we're experts in horse health, um, now's the time to concentrate on people's health. So I respect that a lot of businesses may need to be shut down or being shut down, but I think in the racing industry, uh, if we stick within government guidelines, I think we'll be right. And we did experience the races yesterday at Ramwick. Um, gee, I would have counted 50 people there, and I wouldn't have counted anyone um, breaking rules or doing anything wrong. So I think if we follow guidelines, we can then keep racing up and going. You know, I just had a quick search on Google, and um, it appears 250,000 people are employed by the racing industry in Australia. So there's 250,000 people that are keeping jobs. We're not pleading to keep us going. I'm simply saying we can keep it going if we follow the right guidelines. So it's important we do that. Um, obviously, there's so many different sides of racing, not just the social side, which is which obviously has to stop respect the mass gatherings. Um, but the employment side of things, uh, the breeding industry, the service providers, the transport, vet, 
meds, various dentists, physios, um, you name it, uh, the feed merchants, the people that are providing feed, the horses themselves, animal welfare, the horses that are kept exercising and things like that. So many things to consider, things are changing by the day, but if we're all uh, responsible for our own health and those around us, I'm sure we can, we can keep racing going. Well, racing in Hong Kong is very important. It's in the lifeblood um, of the society here. And fortunately for us, or maybe unfortunately, but we were the first ones to be hit with the virus a few months ago. And the club were very proactive in the measures they took, restricting attendance and things like that. And we've been able to go on uh, to a certain degree, business as usual. Um, our races have been un uh, unaffected, um, which is a great thing. Um, we need something to brighten up our spirits with and, and be able to uh, have some type of normality. Now here we are on the doorstep of the derby and it's great that this race is going to go ahead. It's a good strong field. Hopefully my horse can stand up and, and be counted. Hopefully we can just continue to race through this the best we can and wish everyone out there the best. Hi everyone. Uh, obviously the world is in a is in a pretty tricky place um and and our industry has been hit extremely heavily you know and it's um it's going to be pretty tough times ahead for, our, for all of our family friends um and and you know it's a it's a it's a global problem now obviously and uh, large measures have been taken by by people higher up to to take the decision to finish racing till the start of may which uh, ultimately, we can only support and and, um, and and hopefully it will be the the right decision long term. Um, a big day ahead tomorrow in Australia, obviously with their racing going ahead with the Golden Slipper and uh, the Ranvit. Um, obviously, I'm very fortunate to be aboard Prague, who, who looks looks set to at some point get Group One credentials. Um, whether it's tomorrow is. Yeah, remains to be remains to be seen as you know the the slipper is um, an extremely competitive race and it's one of the one of the largest races in the in the Australian calendar. So I'm extremely excited to ride him. Obviously, I've got uh, a Dave and Young Rascal both been sent down from William Haggis's yard in Newmarket, um, and they're they're taking part in the Ranvit Stakes and the Mannion Cup, which uh, are obviously two great rides to have. A day probably could have done with today being wet and rainy rather than 37, 38 degrees, but so be it. Um, he certainly looks the the class act in the race, and and hopefully. Um, he can go very close and be competitive and as to young rascal um, he looks like he's travelled down here very well and, and hopefully all can go well with him too um, but yeah obviously uh, I can only hope that everyone everyone I know and, and everyone else knows can stay healthy and, um, and remain safe during what's going to be a very turbulent and tricky time for everybody. Hi everybody, um, my name is Dennis Hogan, racehorse trainer in North Tipperary, Ireland. Um, obviously we're all aware we're, we're in a crisis with this coronavirus and um, I suppose first and foremost is the, is the health of, of, of our nation and, and, and of, of everyone around us and, and um, why we're still um, racing behind closed doors. Um, today is the start of the flat season in Ireland and I'm en route to Nace where we have four runners, uh, three staff and uh, myself. So, um, look, we're very lucky to be to be still able to do it. Obviously, if the situation is to get worse, um, we know there's, there's, there is probably going to be changes, but um, I'm sure that's going to happen. Ho hopefully it won't get to that, but as we've all been told, we're, we're prepared for the worst. Um, so, look, it's, I just think that the IHRB, HRI, the Irish government have have done a great work and everyone is adhering to the protocols in place. Um, I think it's been very well managed. I've been to five meetings now with, without without a crowd and no owners, um, minimum, minimum of a crowd and I think everyone is adhering to the social distancing. Um, so I, I just think it's been it's it's been run very well and um, hopefully it can keep going as long as we can. But obviously as I said if the situation was to get worse then racing is not, not the most important in the world but um, at the same time it's keeping a lot a lot of people in the industry and jobs and um, it, it would be it will be very hard to manage um, with staff and owners if if the if, if we get stopped for too long but um, obviously as I said ho hopefully we can 
we can we can um, not not reach the situation that bad. So I'm here at Fair Hill with Breeders' Cup champ Sharing, who's just coming back from a uh, a winter holiday. She was in Florida for a little while, and she's happy to be back at Fair Hill, as you can see. Um, we're dealing with the coronavirus here as best we can at Fair Hill. Fortunately, we're pretty spread out here. Um, the stables are, are far apart, so we're able to carry on pretty much as normal, um, but we're also being extremely respectful of personal hygiene and washing hands, and everybody's sort of keeping their space as best they can. But, whoa! <laughs> but the horses... <laughs> we'll just go with the first ones. <laughs>